extra, extra, read all about it. Jack Kelly and his ragged band of newsies find something to fight for in Newsies, inspired by the real-life Newsboy strike of 1899. It's a turn-of-the-century feel-good family musical that'll have you moving in your seat. Hi, I'm Lou Castor. I'm the associate choreographer of Newsies the Musical. And I'm Evan Kasperzak, and I play the role of Elmer in Newsies. You make stuff on page, and man, you is major news. Newsies is based on the Newsboy Strike of 1899, and it was also a Disney movie in 1992. As a kid, it was, it was really awesome seeing this group of guys really, really dancing and like being guys getting to play around and joke around and it was uh, it was really inspiring it's, it's one of the things that got me into dance in the first place I love the characters the characters are just so embraceive and energetic youthful it's like being at a rock concert you have people screaming and yelling and jumping on their feet at the end of numbers which is uh, it's really kind of a crazy thing to be a part of Newsies is a dream job for an associate choreographer. You know, I get to travel the nation and find young talent. I absolutely had to be a part of it and drop everything to, to audition. I'm absolutely living the dream. Uh, I can't imagine doing anything else. It really is a family and it's, it's so much fun to be a part of and hopefully we'll run forever. And we just met associate choreographer Lou Castro there, who makes the musical signature upbeat jazz style and fancy footwork happen. Now Lou is going to try and teach our Ben Aaron a few of those steps and see if he could make the cut as a Broadway superstar. Check it out. So Newsies is coming to Miami, and in light of this, I thought I would learn some of the great dance moves they do on stage. The good news is, I am an incredible dancer. So newspaper dance, yeah? You're going to jump onto your paper. One. Yes. Then you open up two. Now three, four, yep, five, six. You're gonna spit on the paper, seven. Spit on it. Spit on it. Feeder, feeder spit on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, five, six, seven, <laughs> and eight. And go ahead and use your arms. You're gonna go left, right. Are you guys just making up as you go along or is this really happening? Oh, this really happens okay. every night. <laughs> Yeah. You want to go on? There's a sale on cantaloupes. It's real paper. <laughs> Would you want to do it again? I think, you know what? I'm, I'm not a step-by-step -step kind of guy. I'm like, just throw me in there and let's just do it. <laughs> Maestro. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, up, down, spit, and eight. One, two, three, up, four, five, six, and eight. <laughs> I thought that went quite well. <laughs> yeah, that was good. It was really good. Thank every, you guys. Every day. Very much. Yep. Very nice, very nice. Well, Disney's Beauty and the Beast is the classic story of a young woman named Belle and a prince who was transformed into a hideous beast because of his cruel and selfish ways. Take a look at what's coming, at what is becoming Broadway's eighth longest running production in history. It's a tale as old as time. In order to become human again, the beast must earn Belle's love before time runs out. If she doesn't love him soon, he and his family are doomed forever. It's such a universal story because it's about looking beyond the exterior of somebody to see what's really going on inside, to see the heart of a person, to see past the facade and really get to know somebody for who they are, not what they are. That's Matt West who choreographed this musical that still features the songs we love from the animated film, as well as an additional seven new music numbers written for this international stage production. We had a good time with Beauty. It's got incredible music. Alan Menken and Howard Ashman and Tim Rice 
The songs are emotional and so much fun to choreograph to. The original creators of the Broadway production are back together for this new tour, including costume designer Anne Holdward, who won a Tony Award for her work in the show. To win it for beauty was a wonderful thing because it was a show that I was proud of and that I'd had a remarkable relationship with uh, the producers and with the, with the other creatives. So it was a really a fun and exciting and it had been a goal for me in my life so it was it was a big deal before getting to that stage in her life she had plenty of research to do for this stage and even traveled to California to meet with the original animation team who created the Beauty and the Beast movie which was edifying interesting seeing where their research came from what their process was and then I really came back with that information and then started months worth of research um, into the actual period of the late 1700s. And there were plenty of sketches and approval meetings before these beautiful, over-the-top costumes could be made. It took Anne about two years before she was able to see her work finally hit the stage. It was a lot of steps. But a big musical is a lot of steps. It's a lot of time, a lot of time up front that I think when you go to see it, it looks effortless. Um, but the, there is a tremendous process of getting us to that look of being effortless. With over 35 million people in 13 countries having watched these phenomenal performances, fans of all ages are quickly making this a must-see musical. Still ahead, hear what it was like to be at the very first table reading for Wicked. We'll have some Wicked fun as there is more to come on this special edition of Six in the Mix. This next musical has won a Grammy, a Tony, and 50 other notable awards. Wicked is the untold story about the Witches of Oz and their amazing journey to become the Wicked Witch of the West. Take a look. I'll help you be popular. You'll hang with the right cohorts. You'll be good at sports. Know the slang you've got to know. So let's start, because you've got an awfully long way to go. It's funny and charming and clever, but really what it comes down to is the story and the relationship between these two characters, and you care so much about them. That's producer David Stone, who would visit Miami as a child. He was also at the very first table reading for Wicked, and tells us what it was like to be one of the first to review the script. I was excited to see it, but I wasn't expecting to be as moved as I was. The song for good. just caught me by surprise, and, uh, and that really is the reason I wanted to do the show. Long before Dorothy and her ruby slippers dropped in, two other girls meet in the land of Oz. One born with emerald green skin, the other is beautiful, ambitious, and very popular. Based on the novel by Gregory Maguire and an infectious score by Stephen Schwartz, this family-friendly musical continues to be a Broadway blockbuster year after year. We didn't want to just do uh, what people think of as a touring production for Wicked. We wanted to bring the whole Broadway show, the whole experience of Wicked, to the rest of the country. And with over 45 million people experiencing this international phenomenon, there might be a good reason and audience members keep coming back. You see the show the first time and you want to see it again because you care about the characters and then when you see it the second time or the third, you realize all the little clues we planted throughout about how the scarecrow becomes a scarecrow. We've given little clues about all of these things throughout the show. It takes a big crew for a big show to come to life on stage. Determination and 16 tractor trailers bring the show to you, but with hard work come great rewards. When they are 
so excited by the show and, and people save up and, 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 and make a special occasion to come see this and, and you watch them watch the show, that's, that's even more exciting than watching the show. I mean, and I love watching the show, but seeing the audience looking at the stage at Wicked is amazing. With more than 20 years under his belt as a seasoned professional on and off Broadway, it was his aunt and uncle who owned an acting camp that started it all for David. And I started acting and then I didn't want to act anymore, I wanted to do the other side. Uh, so after college I, I did this and it's all I've ever done. David may be busy on Broadway now, but he has definitely spent some valuable time dining with his family at the legendary Wolfie's restaurant on Miami Beach. My grandmother would go, I'll tell you one story, this won't get on the air, but maybe it will because I'm sure everyone has a grandmother. We would go and they would put onion rolls on the table um, and the waitress would go away, she'd take her bag, she'd put all the rolls, she'd put the basket back, she'd excuse me miss, where are the rolls? Bring us some rolls. So and then we'd eat the rolls all week. See it for the first time or see it again. If you would like to learn more about any of these shows you've just seen, call the box office at 305-949-6722 or log on to arshtcenter.org to read up, select your seats, buy tickets, and more. You can keep up with them on social media as well. The handle's at Arsht Center. Thanks so much for letting us take you behind the scenes for our exclusive preview of the 2014-2015 Broadway in Miami series at the Adrian Arsht Center.